This is a triple helix tech tip. So normally in Sandstorm, our robot will come off of the L2 uh, platform and the driver will hit a button that will undock the arm from its starting position and then hit another button that swaps cameras so that uh, when the robot is turned around he's looking at the uh, this side camera so that he can place this hatch on the end of the airship. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see what it looks like if the USB controllers get swapped so the driver is holding what the software thinks is the operator's controller and the operator is holding what the software thinks is the driver's controller. It's a little bit of a mess the button that the driver pushed thinking that he was undocking the arm actually extends our lifter and the button that the driver pushed thinking that he was swapping the camera from one, from one side to the other takes the arm and it moves it from the docking position all the way over to a, uh, a, a different uh, position on the other side of the arm. Let's watch it again. So Triple Helix's drive station for the past couple of years has used two controllers that are Xbox One controllers. Uh, so on this setup we have the operator on the left hand side of the laptop and we have the driver on the right hand side of the laptop. And normally what we would do is we would plug in the driver's controller first and then we would lock that and then we plug in the operator's controller second. But it turns out that the identifiers in the driver station are identical. So even though they're locked, if you unplug the controllers, whichever one gets plugged in first will become the USB zero controller. So since the operator one was plugged in first, when you push the buttons on that one, that one lights up the USB zero controller. The driver's controller, since it was plugged in second, will light up the uh, USB one. And then if those are swapped and you plug in, plug them in opposite first, then they'll swap in the software. So what we have found is that if you want to ensure that these things stay locked in place. What you need to do is unplug them both and then you need to have two different controllers that have different names that show up in the driver station. So like I said, these ones were both Xbox One controllers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set one of those Xbox One controllers aside and we're gonna replace that with an Xbox 360 controller. And we did find that a no-name generic Xbox 360 controller does not necessarily work for this. We ended up having to use a Microsoft 360 controller. So we've cleared out these, these ports. And in order to make this work, you still need to plug in the driver side first, the one that you want to go to zero. And then you need to lock it. And then you can plug in the, uh, the operator side and that one will go to USB 1 and you can lock that one. And now, because they're different names in the, uh, in the driver station, you can now unplug these ports and replug them back in however you want to, in whichever order and in uh, whichever port, and the controls will, f will stick with the proper controller. And you can even uh, restart the driver station software or you can even reboot the laptop and it will still remember and follow along the way that it's supposed to. So if people are having these kind of problems, this is the solution that we've come up with that seems to work. So good luck out there.